Clown go. <laughs> yeah, okay, my name is uh, Craig Downer. I'm a I'm fourth generation vet and wildlife ecologist and taking a real interest in the high net. Craig, could you also uh, sign in? Okay. Thank you. And um, I testified against this letter, which I'm strongly opposed to. I think it's a very dishonest letter. And I heard the um, presentation by Dr. Swanson, and I did talk to him afterwards, and he admitted that some of my points were quite valid, although he didn't bring them up in the presentation. Uh, it seems to me like they're um, scapegoating the wild horse and burrows and using them as a um, political pawn. And I really resent that. I'm a lifetime uh, um, supporter of the wild horse, and I, I knew and worked with Wild Horse Annie. And I was in the doctor program here at UNR, but um, they knew I was a wild horse advocate, so they didn't want me to study the wild horses, so I went into the Peace Corps. But I, uh, nonetheless, it's remained quite a passion of mine throughout my life, and I've become sort of a specialist in this order uh, it's called the parasodactyl order, it includes the, the odd toed ungulates. They have a different digestive system, different hoofs, <coughs> different lifestyle, different teeth. So many things different about them. And so, what I discovered is that actually the, all these animals, are their capers, equids, or horse family members, or rhino family members, are natural gardeners. And they have their different digestive system. Um, is not as de uh, has uh, feces, they're not as decomposed, and consequently they contribute uh, a lot more substantially as uh, contrasted to the ruminant um, multi-stomach pregastric uh, for many digesters like the, uh, the cloven hoofed ruminant that we're more commonly um, used to. And uh, by the same token, they uh, contribute more humus and build healthy soils, and they also uh, contribute a lot more intact seeds that are capable of germination. And th these, these are, are major factors that help ecosystems. For that reason, they call all the parasodactyls wonderful gardeners of, the, of their ecosystems to which they're appropriate. And they're, I've given you a list of um, uh, references, including some of my own studies and articles and that of others. And we did receive um, that. Yeah, and it really proves that they are um, enhancers of the ecosystem. And I feel they're being unfairly targeted and they should be regarded as natives. But, uh, you know, these appropriate management levels that they are assigning are a real mockery of the law and they're not genetically viable. And I don't, uh, I myself do not believe in the chemical uh, control of their fertility. I believe there's a much more respectful way of limiting uh, the, uh, the populations, but you've got to let them fill their niche and have mature social units. But you shouldn't be domesticating a wild horse or burrow. That's really contrary to the true intent of the law. But I, I do support what they're doing to try and help them. That's your I just I just have a different philosophy about that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I am very opposed to this letter. Thank you. opportunity to speak. My name is Robin Orloff and I'm urging you not to support this letter even though maybe as Douglas County, um, well I want to say Douglas County, thank you for all the folks who are working so hard for the horses here. Um, but I feel like if, uh, this letter <coughs> supports um, the roundups throughout all of Nevada. I've been in Nevada for 40 years, traveled all over rural Nevada and you'll see in my public comment I speak to what I see as many impacts 
not just horses. And I just feel this coalition letter targets the horses. Um, I talked about spaces I've been where there's been OHV damage, cattle damage, mining damage, whatever, and I think that we can all live together. And um, uh, so I'm protesting that coalition letter. I came out west years ago, like many people before me, fell in love with the high desert of Nevada, endless land fringed with rugged mountains presented me with unlimited opportunity to explore. I call this majestic place home. We Nevadans pride ourselves on our western themes, painted, sculpted, displayed all over town in gift shops, Pony Express, Wells Fargo stagecoaches, colorful cowboys, cowgirls, and rodeos, miners, historic and pioneering symbols. Last July, however, the wild horse roundups began in earnest. I read and watched as herds of horses, some with foals, desperately trying to keep up were being chased by helicopters in 100 degree weather. Horses dropped down dead from excessive heat and exhaustion, dehydration. Other horses broke their backs and legs, hips and shoulders as they tried to escape or were mishandled. Foals could not keep up with their mothers. They were too young and they were left behind. We're not talking about a few horses, but every day dozens died and it was that I read of these stories about my home in utter disbelief. And I just feel that this coalition letter is, in, is wanting to use our tax money to continue this um, brutality. I thought it could not be so. We, we are, after all, a nation with animal cruelty prevention laws. Surely it could not be happening in a state that in many respects owes its very existence to the horse. And as I read on, I came across countless domestic and international publications about the cruelty that was being perpetrated against the horses in Nevada from Hawaii to the East Coast. And all news outlets were carrying it and portrayed in New York City's Times Square for all visiting from all over the world to see. No longer were Nevadans being, Nevadans being seen around our own nation in the world as proud upstanding citizens honoring our wild horses, but as people who are in fact brutalizing them. And I keep holding on to the belief that this somehow is an aberration, but I am repeatedly shocked again. Um, I come as a Nevadan, an ashamed Nevadan, um, urging that horse brutality be stopped. And I just can't believe the coalition is asking for money, for more money to perpetrate the abuse. And I hope you're not acquiescent with it. And I'd like to see all that money be used um, to help the ecosystems, to restore the ecosystems, to have HMAs, to, um, to come up with an area, a way to manage the horses and use them for our ecotourism <coughs> and bring tourists in um, to enjoy them and so bring money in rather than spend money. Um, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Could you, you sign in, please? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Julie Duda. I'm part of um, a group working to protect the open space and wildlife and wildlife habitat at the Mountain View Nature Park in Gardnerville. Um, and I'm here tonight as an individual. Uh, Douglas County has many groups that support open space and wildlife, including wild horses. If all these groups formed a coalition, we would be many thousands of people working to protect, supporting the horses, the birds, the open space, the wildlife habitat, and so on. I made a short list of safety challenges as I see it in this county, and here's my top three. Drunk drivers, drug dealers, and developers promoting fast growth. These people present the real threat to our well-being and safety, not wild horses. Wild horses are a Nevada heritage and must be protected. Please do not miss this opportunity to support your constituents by protecting the wild horses and say no to BLM. Thank you. Thank you. 
me sign it. Yes. Today. I didn't bring a pen. May I borrow yours? Yes, you may. Oh, thank you. Somebody want that. Somebody just left with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Here's another one. <clears throat> Here we go. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Laura Fusen. I'm a Carson City resident, and I'm a wild horse advocate. And I'm writing to express to the board to please decline or do not sign this letter. <clears throat> there's a better way. I really feel there's a better way. And I think this room, the participants in this room, also feel there's a better way. The herd management areas are not utilized to their full potential and are mismanaged. Some of these HMAs are overpopulated, some are absent of horses, and far more are, have achieved their pop correct populations. So we know something is working. A separate agency needs to be formed, perhaps separate from BLM that will be appointed by the government to manage Nevada's biggest wildlife issue, taking more horse burrows off the land and penning them for years is not cost effective and is a major hit to our government's spending. Again, I say there's a better way. Through private and public herd management programs, 